All right, everybody, I've been out here working with this thing. Uh, I switched around the spindles, you know that, according to my last video, and I was going to cut down my uh, bars on the pinion thing and fucking work on that, and I'm glad I didn't. What we've got here is I took a piece of steel, flat stock, measured out where my holes are at, stuck the flat stock in, drilled holes through the flat stock, and then stuck them into the spindles. Okay? Now, in messing with this thing, I've noticed that I still have the same problem. My outside tire, or this inside tire right here, let me see if I can get up here and stand on this thing so you guys can see this. I moved the spindles in, so we've actually got an Ackerman turning angle that's coming inward. So that means that for some of you out there, it's like taking an imaginary axle and putting it out there and then lining up your kingpin with your whatever up you know to that axle but you can see obviously that that's not entirely correct so that's what we're having right there so we've actually got the reverse form of Ackerman in this thing now we're standing right up above it okay so the outside tire is turning sharper than the inside tire now the way I have this set up that's gonna happen because I actually set this up wrong again the way I first had it was right I know it's right and I'll show you here in a second however what's happening here doesn't really have anything to do with my steering geometry it has to do with my distance between my kingpin connector and my or my kingpin and uh, my tie rod connection here when you turn your steering you reach a zero point where this tire can't extend this so this tire can't bend out you know can't go any farther but this tire on the other hand here I'll, I'll do it the opposite way I'm reaching the zero point over here which is the point to where it can't go back any further because this tie rod can't extend out further but over here on the other hand when we've got the ground hitting this tire it bends this tire in because the distance between this and this is too close together I'm getting this thing on both tires on both tires the ground is hitting this outside tire and bending it in. It's it's literally bending or <coughs> pushing in on the on it. Well, it's not even pushing in on the tie rod. The tie rod is allowing it to go that for that extra distance in the rotation. So, when the ground hits this, it automatically bends it in. Bends this tire in sharper than that one. And the way I did have it was right but what I need to do is I need to redo all this crap again and instead of having a three disc three inch distance between my kingpin and this I'm gonna need to make that distance bigger longer so that way it doesn't allow when, when the tire comes to this spot it's gonna stop it's not gonna bend in anymore so you can really see it here this tire doesn't really move much. This one goes a lot. And that's what was happening. So I'm going to have to rebuild the spindle so they're bigger. I've got a larger distance, which is going to affect my turning radius. I'm not going to have much of a tight turning radius, which is really all that not that big of a deal. If I can at least turn this damn thing and not have the front end slide, that, you know. So may, I might even have to go with the original idea. Take the rear end tires and put them on front. And so I've got more grip in front. Because these things just slide. Yeah, that's what's happening here. We're reaching a point in the cycle, in the rotation, where uh, there's a degree of angle there that just allows this. See, look how much that moves because we're past that point. 
if I move these spindle points out further, that it'll probably stop about right there. And if that doesn't work, then I'm going to have to put stops on the spindles themselves. So they'll only be, be able to go so far. But, yeah, let's head in the house and I'll show you why the other way is going to work. Okay, guys, I just went in and did the other half of the video and it ended up being 22 minutes long. So I decided, no, I'm just going to come back out in the shop and show you guys what the, what the problem is, is happening. All right, so now we've got, got this set up here. Okay. Now I only have this end set up, so because the other ends, I don't want fucking this up. I don't want the. I only have just this end connected, so you guys can see this a little better. Now, regardless of whether you have your Ackerman set up or you're just a little L shape or whatever, um, what happens when you turn in your radius or in your your your, tol your turn circle? I'm gonna call it turn circle. <laughs> my my brilliant brain comes up with its own terminology of crap. Anyways, in your turning. In your spindles, your tie rod has a full left turn and a full right turn. You have an arc, you have a certain like pie chart where your optimum turn angle is at for a right turn and your optimum left turn angle is at. When you overextend that angle, regardless of how long your tie rod is, you always you will overextend that and the ground will push the tire and it'll cause that to happen. You you reach a point in your arc where your tie rod will no longer stabilize your spindle. In my situation, what was happening is when I would turn, or Cody would turn, he would turn to a point, the ground would grab the tire and force the tire in and make this tire turn, because we already, we already were already past the full left turn mark, or right turn or whatever. If it was left turn, it was doing this. It was binding it. It was going, going past the, ar the, the angle of uh, stability, I guess. It was going past that angle. Now, the tire was, you know, it wouldn't go too much farther. But there's a point in your turning where your tie rod cannot keep your spindle solid. So, that's what was happening with me. It had nothing to do with my Ackerman angle. But, it did, it does. Because, one way to get away from that, to get away from this, is I know, I thought I was going to be safe. But I guess not. The tie rod, the, the rack and pinion, has a throw of two inches. A total of four. Two inches one direction, two inches back the other direction. A total of four inch stroke. This, right here, is less than one to one. This is four inches, my stroke is four inches, so this here should be four inches or more to keep me in that optimum steering stability range. I can't believe I, I, I forgot about that because I do that on all my builds. You know, my, my, uh, uh, my spindles are set at four inches, and my tie rod, or my um, act, my pitman arm, is set at about two and a half to three. So what's happening up here keeps this stable down here. This four inches, this down here should be four inches or more. So since I set this up at three inches, I'm going to have to put my Ackerman back into it, take my holes, and bring them out to four inches. I might even go four and a half. And then I might even throw in an extra 5 degrees and make it a 20 degree Ackerman. Now that's not going to line up with the center of my axle. It's actually going to be crisscrossing closer to like under my butt or whatever. But. So if this thing here was further out, my arc would be larger. And I wouldn't hit those, I wouldn't hit those spots or those spots. Well, at least I know what's going on now. So, now, I think what I'll probably do here is... I'm going to I'm gonna take another bar like this, because I've already hacked this up too much, unwelded and all sorts of crap, but I'm going to take another bar, just like this one. I'm going to drill the holes, slide it over the top of this, put it here, coming out here, and then weld it, weld it around here. It's going to raise my pin up a quarter of an inch, but that's no big deal. And, uh... This hole right here, for this part of the spindle, I might even put in like a bolt that extends down. So when it turns, it'll hit and stop. I just might even do that. So I'll actually have a stop on this, just in case. Put a stop here, so it'll stop there. Yeah. Just might do that. But anyways, guys, I'm gonna get on out of here. I'm getting cold. Oh, I'd like to welcome all my new subscribers and all my new viewers. Cool. 
Hi guys. Unfortunately, a lot of you guys didn't even make it to our live video chat the other night. Yeah, I went live right here on YouTube. But I know a lot of you deadbeats out there see my, uh, my titles of my videos and sometimes think, oh god, he's doing another live video. Those are boring. I'm not even going to watch them, so you guys don't even watch. So, yeah, you know, maybe I should convert this channel over to a paid channel. Maybe I should do that. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> hmm, it's an option. Alright guys, I'm going to get on out of here. So, see you guys in the next one. Wish me luck on this damn thing.